Well, we haven't talked about that trade yet today. The one featuring uh, Bugstad and McCann going mm-hmm. from Florida to Pittsburgh. And Derek Broussard. Riley Shane. Ryan Riley Shane and some picks going back to Florida. And I, I think what I've read is that Pittsburgh's trying to convince people that they actually like these players and that this is it. But I don't get that sense. Florida's trying to convince that. Well, is that who it is? No, okay. I, I, th- I think Pittsburgh is happy with Bugstad. Really? I, I think he I, wants to, I think they, they kind of want to. They like Bukestad? Okay, I just assumed it was more, okay, this is, we're clearing some money, we're going to move some things around, and then we're really going to make a blockbuster deal down the road. I just assumed yeah, Pittsburgh's I think it's the always, other way around. Yeah. I right? mean, I think, I think 100%, it's, even Dale Talon is post, in his presser today, is like, we cleared out some space for the summer. Well, Maybe I heard the, Pierre say. They want to run at the, yeah. the Columbus guys. They want, they want both Russians come on down to Miami. Right. Package deal, Panarin Bobrovsky. Now, you can't say that out loud, not yet, but you don't have to be, a, you know, I'm sure you can filter it back channel and they, sure. they see that Florida will have a whole bunch of money. I think they wanted to get out of Bukestad's contract. He's got a couple more years after this year, like four and change. What happened to him? He was really good a couple of years ago. Yeah. Like he, really good. He, he goes back and forth between wing and center. And I think they see that big size. They want him to play center, but you know, they have Trocek and Barkov there. So he's not going to play in the top six at center there. Uh, and I then some other guys emerged. <laughs> not doing it in Pittsburgh either. No, exactly. So, but I think he'll play in the middle. I mean, he was playing on the wing yeah. uh, at times in Florida. So I think he'll play in the middle there. And I think you might get Kessel on the third line. You might get Hornquist. I mean, you'll get some players to play with. Right. Um, and there's some cost certainty. It's a body. He'll get you 40 points. And McCann is still young. He's traded for good Branson. He's I moved mean, around a lot. Yeah. He was a Leaf originally. Yeah. He like, dazzles you briefly. Like <laughs> fleetingly, you'll see moments like, man. Look at the skill. Look at the shot. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Ted, there'll be eight games later. You haven't seen it again. Well, and see, that's my, that was my my point here with Pittsburgh. And and maybe that is the case. Maybe they yeah. want a Bukestad. Maybe they like McCann. And they're like, that's it. We're done. I just always assumed it's, it's something bigger is coming with Pittsburgh. Well, like I think, I mean, they traded Alexiak. I think because money obviously is very tight for, for Pitt. So, you know, they traded Alexiak. Uh, clear out some space. Mm-hmm. It's almost, you know, Shane and... Broussard are about $5 million. Bukestad and McCann are about $5 million, dollar in, dollar out. So, um, All right. Yeah, and I think Brass just, I don't know, even know if he's going to go to Florida. Like, I don't, he might, they might just say, just take the week because you might not even, we'll you, just flip you we're not going to, you're not going to play here. We're going to trade you again. So if you want to take the week and chill out and whatever, because he's on his way somewhere else in short order, I would be pretty sure of it. Well, that's an example of the Derek Broussard acquisition by Pittsburgh of how, like, it can get so hyped when it goes down, and you just assume everything's going to be perfect. Like, he's the perfect number three guy. The best third centerman in the league he was talked about. It was money. Best top three in the league. Death down the middle. Yep. Can't beat it. Nick Benino, HBK all over again. And immediately it was like, nah, this isn't going to work. You know why, though? And Ope might be able to appreciate this. And even I did, to a different degree. My last year in St. Louis, the first year of my life, I was asked to play in the fourth line. (laughs) (laughs) And that was my reaction. Like, I, I wanted no part of it. Even though I was in the NHL, it just wasn't for me playing that little, that role. And I think Derek Broussard kind of felt that, not that he should be ahead of Malkin and Crosby, but he doesn't, he doesn't want to play 13 minutes. He doesn't want to play the last 20 seconds of a power play. But, Johnny, it's like, it's like the old saying, I used to have to tell my teammates when I got a kind of a little older and a little bit more grizzled, I'd be like, they're not holding you back because you're playing too good. Right. There's so much pressure to win. If you're playing really good, you're going to go on the ice no matter what. If Nazem Kadri is just on fire, Mike Babcock's got to put him on the ice. He's got to put him on left wing. He's got to put him somewhere. You're never held back for playing too good. And it's a tough lesson when you're a young kid because you think everybody's screwing you over. The coach hates me. The GM hates me. Wrong. you got to go on the ice if you're playing good. There's too much pressure to win. I think Brass, in his case, he's thinking, I've been around for 10 years, made a lot of money, I'm big game brass. I played in New York. I've been in the play. I think he couldn't get to the. Big he couldn't game get brass my ass. Well, oh, That's I, I don't think I he, he couldn't get to the spot where he mentally where he was in a spot to play well. And you're right. If he played better, he played more. But I just don't think he could get there. And I could listen. I, I played in the fourth line. I don't think he's getting any better. And I than played what he is like right garbage. Now. But I didn't care. I'm like this sucks. And like I didn't play well enough to play higher. But I was still miserable playing on the fourth line. So I kind of get it. Yeah. And you know. Well, you know, maybe it's, I mean, Kadri has not, this hasn't been his best season, let's be honest. He's been inconsistent. 
And you had to expect that with the acquisition of John Tavares. It's like your role is, mm-hmm. although he's still getting prime time penalty or uh, power play time. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not saying that I've completely made up my mind on this, but maybe maybe you can only have two big dogs, and then the other guy, you know, you got to find room on the wing. You got to find room. I, I agree. Don't know. I've always thought that you could just like top load some a couple lines during the regular season. Anyway, obviously, come playoff time is a different animal, but. Like there's penalties, you don't. Certain guys don't kill penalties. You get some couple dominant. Like playing against Colorado, uh, uh, Colorado Avalanche back in the day, yeah. it was a lot of Sackick and a lot of Forsberg. You get forty. Can you even minutes name? The, I, we played right. against them. I don't even remember who the third line centerman was. Sean Podine. I don't even know. Like you know, know, it was. I know Chris Drury came up at one. He, he played the on the games, wing though. Yeah. yeah. When he got up there with right. Hayduke and those guys. So. And the game's different now. It's like a, it's more, more known as a four line game. Everyone's got to play it so much faster. But a whole lot of Sackick and a whole lot of Forsberg, man. That that's enough problems. You don't even need any more after that. No, that's yeah. right. But with, but with Nas in Toronto, his contract's so good. Like even if he doesn't produce the thirty that he shown he can. Like, like if I'm an, if I'm four and a half million dollars, you only need to put up thirty-five to forty points, and you're kind of giving them value for your contract, anyways. Yeah, if I'm a centerman, I'm like, I used to take a lot of face-offs, and it was like, if it was Forsberg and Sackick, I'm, I, I, I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want Tavares and Matthews all night. I'm like, what? Yeah, well, it's always been that way. Like it was Gretzky and Messier, yeah. right? Reiser and Fedorov. Exactly. It's just you know, a handful, man. It was always kind of yeah. It was always it's always been just two guys. 